In this video, I'm going to share with you a summary of my card sales on ComC, including how many cards I sold and how much profit I made during the months of April and May 2022. I will also share with you some highlights from the cards that I sold so you can see what kinds of things are working more and what kinds of things are working less for me. All right, let's get into this. In the past, I have made other videos outlining some of my strategies and approaches to making money on ComC, so if you are interested in those, you may be interested in my ComC playlist, which I will link above. Now, as we get into this, the way this video will be organized is I will start with an overview of the numbers, just like the general numbers, how many cards I sold in total during these two months, how much I sold them for after fees and such, how much money I actually had in on those cards, including shipping and ComC ingestion fees, and what my total profit was on these cards after calculating all those together. After sharing the big overall number, I'll then go through some of the highlights of the specific cards that sold and show you how much I paid for some of these, how much I sold for some of these. Uh, just the highlights, not every single card, but some of the highlights. All right, so first let's get into the overall numbers. Now the numbers I'm sharing here are actually from March 28th up to May 26th, just because I shared a video in the past with the numbers from 2022 up to March 27th, and I'm collecting this data here on May 26th, but it's still basically two months. You know, I didn't include the, the last couple days of May, but I also am including the last couple of days of March, so it evens out basically. So during this two month period, I've sold a total of 377 cards on the ComC platform. And just as a side note, so you can get some sort of sense for how many cards I'm actually selling, like how big my ComC platform is. Uh, I currently, at the as of right now on May, May 26, when I'm collecting this data, I have 1,231 cards up for sale on my ComC account right now. So that just gives you a sense. So again, I've sold 377 cards. Of those 377 card sales in this two months, 278 of them were from cards I had bought on the platform itself at some point and then flipped them. And the other 99 cards were cards that I had sent into the platform at some point that sold during these two months. Of the 278 flipped directly on the platform, 22 of them were baseball, one was football, one was UFC, and the other 254 were basketball. Of the 99 cards that I had sent into the platform, Three were baseball, 12 were football, two were UFC, one was F1, and the other 81 were basketball. Now as for the 278 cards that I had bought on the platform and then sold on the platform, I had spent a total of $1,408.13 on those cards, and after transaction fees are considered, I sold them for $1,969.95 for a profit of $561.82, which makes a 39.9% ROI on that $1,408.13 spent. Now that is a very nice percentage, but there are a few things to keep in mind with those numbers. First, I've actually spent way more than that $1,408.13 overall, and there are still plenty of cards that haven't yet sold sitting in my ComC store, so it's not like this is just me spending that much money and bringing that much profit back. It's not quite so clear cut. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Another is that if I wanted to get my profit turned from ComC credit into cash, however much I was choosing to turn into cash, I would also have to take out another 10% for the cash out fee for that because that's part of how ComC works. Uh, I'm not calculating that cash out fee in the numbers here because for the time being, most of my ComC credit is going back into other cards instead of being turned into cash. I will be getting chunks of cash eventually and I'm making sure to not spend all of my ComC credit so that my actual balance of eventual cash does continue to go up at some kind of pace. So those are just two important things I wanted to mention here just for the sake of transparency because you know it can sound like, oh wow, all that profit, but really, it's like profit, but it's profit towards, you know, I haven't even made up the money from the initial investment kind of thing. Okay, now let's go on to the other 99 cards that I sold during April and May that I had sent into the platform from off platform. For those cards, I had spent a total, including shipping and ComC ingestion fees of $661.29. And after transaction fees are considered, I sold those 99 cards for $1,527.51 for a profit of $866.22 which makes for a 131% ROI on that $661.29. 
And of course, the same asterisks I mentioned before apply here also. Now, if you follow my channel regularly, you know that the reason that the ROI is so high on these cards that I sent into the platform is because they're cards I bought in China, where the going market price for cards on the domestic market are very often not the same as they are in the domestic US market. Over time, I've been learning which cards to aim for that can help me make a nice little profit. All right, next, I'm gonna share some of the cards I did the best on. First, I'll share a couple of my most successful flips where I just did the buying and the selling just within the platform itself. Number one, Jordan Brewer, 2020 Bowman Chrome Prospect Autograph Purple Refractor numbered out of 250. I bought this one for $27 and sold it four days later for $66.26 after transaction fees. Very nice. So a $39.26 profit with just a few mouse clicks over four days. I can dig that one. Number two. Tyler Gentry 2021 Bowman Chrome Prospect Autograph. I bought this one for $9.40 and sold it two days later for $38 after transaction fees for a nice $28.60 profit. <laughs> nice. Actually, interestingly, I flipped this card twice this month. Uh, once was that one, and then the other one I, I, I made a $14 profit. I bought it for $9.40, made a $14 profit less than an hour later, all right? I then had another 11 cards with a $10 to $15 net profit on each of them. I'll just share those real quick without going into the detailed numbers, but just very quickly go through these. That was the Kobe Bryant 96-97 Upper Deck Hardwood Prospects, the Michael Jordan 98-99 Upper Deck Ovation Jordan Rules, the Jason Tatum 17-18 Prestige Micro Etch Rookies Red, two different Anthony Edwards 2021 Optic Rated Rookie Purple Prisms, the Jaden McDaniels 2021 Hoops Great Significance Auto, the James Wiseman 2021 Flux Titan Rookie Encased, two different Trey Young 1819 Optic Rated Rookie PSA 9s. I should mention that among all the cards I sold, very, very few, maybe five of them, are graded. The rest are raw. Franz Wagner 2021 Goodwin Champions Rookie Authentics Auto numbered out of 299, and Ja Morant 1920 Chronicles Young Dolph, the one with Young Dolph in the background, uh, PSA 9. The other 264 Com C flips had profits ranging from two cents to eight dollars and sixty cents, except for two where I lost money. One was a one dollar loss on a 2021 Mosaic uh, Lamelo Ball National Pride. Uh, that I bought when there were very few of those cards on the platform, but it didn't sell very quickly like I was expecting it to. And then there became a flood of more of that card entered the platform and I ended up just offloading it for a loss. Otherwise, I thought I would hold on to it forever. So I just lost a dollar on that one. And the other loss was a 1314 Upper Deck Black Rudy Gobert Lustrous Rookie Signature numbered out of 199, which did extremely terribly in an eBay auction that I thought would do pretty well and actually lost $15 for me. From among the cards I had sent into the platform, four that did me the best here were all football cards, actually. There was the Hunter Renfro 2019 Select Field Level Cosmic Rookie, which cost me $17.25 after shipping and ingestion fees and sold for $70.83 after transaction fees. Uh, the Justin Herbert 2020 Mosaic Green Prism and also the Camo Pink Prism both cost me $12.75 and brought me back $56.05 a piece. And interestingly, I don't know if you watch the YouTube channel Run Good Life, but I think he bought one of them. And then the fourth one was the Kellen Mond 2021 Origins Gold numbered out of 10, which cost me just $5.75 and sold for $42.75 for a ridiculous ROI. So those four by themselves brought me a profit of $177.18. Very cool. Another 11 cards netted between $17 and $36 worth of profit each. I'll run through those quickly, starting with the ones with the higher profit. Tyrese Maxey, 2021 Optic Choice. Next was the Jim Kelly, 2015 Immaculate Collegiate Immaculate Ink Gold, numbered out of five, which is an extremely beautiful card, by the way. Uh, Fernando Tatis Jr., 2021 Tops Finest Rose Gold Refractor, numbered out of 75. The Giannis Antetokounmpo, 2021 Crown Royale Test of Time, numbered out of 99. The DeJounte Murray, 1617 Studio First Impact Magenta Rookie, numbered out of 30. The Jalen Brown, 16. 1917 Revolution Infinite Rookie, the Andrew Wiggins 1415 Hoops Silver Rookie numbered out of 399, the Anthony Edwards 2021 Optic Purple, I, you saw that one earlier as well, the Tyrese Halliburton 2021 Noir Rookies Association Edition numbered out of 99, 
Jiri Prochazka, which is a 2021 Chronicles UFC XR Asia Red, numbered out of 88, and the John Morant 1920 NBA Hoops Premium Stock Green Prism. Then there was another eight cards that netted a profit between $10 and $15 a piece. Tyrese Maxey 2021 Noir New Wave Jerseys, numbered out of 99. The Tyrese Halliburton 2021 Court Kings Rookies 2. The Tristan Casas 2018 Bowman Draft Sky Blue, numbered out of 499. The Precious Achua 2021 Optic Lime Green Prism, numbered out of 149. The Denny Avdia 2021 National Treasures Rookie Dual Materials, numbered out of 99. The Desmond Bain 2021 Chronicles Majestic Purple, numbered out of 49. The Kirk Cousins 2019 Select Dragon Scale Prism. And the Jason Tatum 1718 Crown Royale Rookie. After that, there was another 21 cards that had a profit between $5 and $10, and then after that, the rest had a profit under $5, including 20 cards that I had a profit under $1 on. Now, those very small profit margin ones were very often ones that I had bought as part of a lot. Now, when I buy a lot, usually there's one or two cards I'm really aiming for, and then any others that I think I can get even just a minuscule profit on, I'll go ahead and send them into Com C. So most of those really small profit margin cards are cards in that kind of category. And luckily with the cards I sent in from off platform, I haven't yet had to take a loss on any of them, but there are plenty that are still sitting unsold in my ComC account, and it's entirely possible that there are some cards in the mix I will eventually have to take a loss on, I just didn't need to for these two particular months. All right, so that was a lot of numbers and a lot of cards. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. But even if you didn't, I do this particular kind of video, this kind of update of how I'm doing on ComC every month or two, as much for me as I do for you guys, because you know, I knowing that I'm going to be making this video and, and organizing myself to make this video actually helps me quite a bit as I'm trying to keep myself organized and stuff. But that's it for this one. Catch you all next time. Peace.